So Edward, I have I have put on my recording. The worst scenario will be to to send to you directly if I think that uh, most of the content is already done. Then we don't add it to what we already have there. But I could still send you the link or anyone who will be interested in. It. Okay. Any any question? I still see IDs. I still see IDs in the participants. I could take you. Off. I want my students to learn to respect and obey simple rules. Simple, very simple rules. It will help you for this course. When you finish the course, you can decide not to keep to rules. But if you want to be in the course and, and do well, please learn. It's a discipline. We are, di we are healthy. Discipline means it's a, something that we think we are helping to shape you with. You want to be in my live session, put your name there. I don't want IDs. I don't want the names. So I don't want Adwa Kofi. And still, people have IDs there. So I will just dissolve the session and then we are gone. But we have to be able to keep to the rules, you see, of engagement in a very calm, friendly way. People need to prompt colleagues, please, can you do what we have been? And maybe the person doesn't even know how to do it, so you can assist us. But the blatant disregard for simple rules gets at me and it won't help us as a collective. So I'm waiting for whoever has 1082, 1257 to change name, please do it. The person who has 1083, 9891, change it. I don't want that. Or is it? Okay. Whilst we wait for that to be done, I still want to give opportunity for people who may have questions to ask. Harry, go ahead. Hello, Doug. Yes, sir. I hope you had um, a good Please, sir. I hope you had a good rest. Yes, please. Go ahead, Gary. Um, please, uh, I want to ask that if you are giving um, a statement, and then the statements, um, or like when you write the dictionaries, you have um, two conditional statements with a conjunction. For instance, uh, men are good and women are bad. Please, I want to ask that if you are writing like uh, it in a symbol form, um, and then you are you are trying to you are creating your this the compound. Please, I want to ask that will it have four uh, this is, symbols? As in the yeah, Kari, so I throw the question back at you. What have we discussed? How do you decompose? Uh, how do we translate? Sorry, men are good. If I say men are good, what type of statement is it? Courage. It's a it's, it's a conditional statement. And if you want to decompose a condition, I want to translate and symbolize and test for whatever. If I gave you just the expression "men are good," how would you uh, break that down? Uh, if if x if x is a man, then x is good. Very good. So how many dictionaries will you have there? Four. Oh oh, we are dealing with just. No, this. okay. Two two. So very good. Then your statement that you gave us now said, men are good and maybe women are bad. Men are good and women are bad. So your men are good alone gave us two atomic formulas. You did it yourself. I didn't tell you. How about women are bad? Uh, if X is a woman, then X is bad. So that would also have how many? Two. two. So if you add two dictionaries to the other two dictionaries, how many would you have in all? Four. So I answered courage. Yes, please. I, I, that's what I was having in mind, but I wanted to confirm. No, but it, I said that, are you answered now? Yes, please. All right, great. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Go, keep working, eh? Then you just fit in the connectives. If there was negation, conditional, disjunction, whatever, then you fit it in and you'll be good. 10839891. You have two options. We dissolve the session now or you get off, or you change. I think there are three options. Or you change your name. You're not obliged to come to the class, please. But if you will be here, I want your name as registered in the call. I cannot tell who you are with that. Please. 
The same with 1084-683. I won't want again. I think if I dissolve the glass, it might be unfair to others who are unable to take them off. So I may have to take you off the session. And this is the last warning, please. Okay, let's have a very good, positive morning. We don't want too many tensions. <laughs> okay, so please do as you are instructed. Use name, official name, or I remove you. I give five minutes for that, and it's 8-12 my time. 817, I'll take anyone who is not properly uh, uh, enrolled into the session. So we can have some decorum and then we can... <laughs> yes, one, don't get worked up. There are people who don't know how to keep to rules. Okay? And so sometimes they bring, they drag everyone along. I don't have special students here at City Campus. I don't expect that the person cannot hear me. If he cannot hear me, then there is no rationale being on that. Okay, apologies, but I don't think they are special students. People can just join in and create a new sound. That is why I insist on that. Okay, so that we can have some level of, you know, uh, formality and yet we can still have a free atmosphere. So I will not warn again. One person has corrected or changed it, whatever it is. But I still have 1084 6883, and I'll keep to my instruction. At 817, I will take you off from all my online sessions. You won't come in unless you are ready to keep them. All right. So any other question? The question courage act was important for some of you, because I'm already looking at your grade, the grading. Some of you will find that useful. Any other question, please, people? Okay, so we can look at the... City campus your questions. I want to do the, the third group, which was the larger class, so we can reach out to most of you at once. Afterwards, we'll look at the questions for the other group. Now, my first question said lecturer of PHCL 204 will be in class unless it is raining heavy. She's not in class lecturing now, so it follows that it is raining heavily. Now the question was, translate and symbolize the argument and test for consistency using tree analysis. The second bit of the question we can do, but if I ask you to translate, how would you translate that? The lecture of PATL 204, Will be, will be in class unless it is raining heavily. Anybody? Please, we'll have to do this very fast. Unless. One hand shot up, then it went down again. 10846883, you have one minute to change name. Anybody wants to respond to that? Unless, unless it's which compound, please. This junction. Very good, that's one coaching. If you put up your hand, then you would have earned the mark. And if you do, <laughs> but I, <laughs> if we do it chorus like that, then everyone will say, I said it first, and it will be discriminatory to pick one over the other. But if you lift your hand, then I'm able to pull you out and reward the effort. And I'm sure by now, everyone knows that that's how I preach classes. Okay, so it's a disjunction, and we'll have one of the disjuncts being the lecture of PACL 204 will be in class. Then the other disjunct will be, it is raining heavily. So you just put, depending on which variable you use, do we use P? Okay, let's use lecture, so L, disjunction, rain, R, for our first statement. 
Then the second part says she's not in class lecturing. That would be a negation of lecturing. So not L. Therefore, it follows that it is raining. So R. And if you have studied your rules of inference already, you have a clue what argument this is. What is it, please? L or R, not L, therefore R. Frank Yabua. Disjunctive syllogism. Excellent. You end yourself a mark, very good mark. That is disjunctive syllogism already. So if one of the rules, then it should give you a signal that if you test, it will be consistent and it will be valid. Okay, that's already a clue. Frank Yabua on the name. Okay. So that's this gentleman. Now the question says translate and symbolize this argument and test for consistency using tree analysis. We already did our translation beautifully. So to test for consistency, we will branch out because we are dealing with disjunction. We we'll put our L on the left, our R on the right. We are done. And we can read. Okay, consistency on the tree. So we'll have L. Those of you who are working with me, you should be. I've helped you see the composition the translation, so it should be straightforward. You see, not L, L, that will close, but R, R, not L opens, and that makes the formula consistent. You can mark yourself in your mind, and that is it. Question two says, demonstrate, is there any question with one? Is there any question, someone has a question with how we did one, question one? Okay, so we can quickly go on to question two. Question two says, demonstrate the validity of the replacement rule called transposition. Replacement rule is another way of saying equivalence rule. I mean, it's boldly written there. I even repeated it in class first, uh, asking you the question. So it can be a challenge. Replacement rule called transposition. That's another way of saying contrapositive. I think. So what's the rule for transposition? You move from what, which compound to which compound? Keep your hand up if you want to answer. It's on your page two. Those who never saw it, I want you to see it now. Page two, equivalent rule number five up there. Transposition to bracket contrapositive. Rosina, in Japan, go ahead. Split the root, move from which compound to which compound. Go ahead, Rosina. You're muted, oh, sorry. Rosina, go ahead. Okay, now me. Naomi, go ahead. Naomi, a tricky. Go ahead. Um, Doc, it moves from conditional to conditional. Very good. So that is the first signal. You end yourself a mark. Someone wants to show us what happens to the first conditional and come in, come in. And how, what happens to it? I want to see if people know the rule. So you say it moves from conditional to, that's correct. Vera, Vera and the baby, go ahead. Um, Doc, please. When you get to the right side of the transposition rule, you interchange it. Thus, you negate the two atomic compounds. Excellent. Well done. So if we have P condition, those who do not have any clue what we are doing, please look at the workbook. Do so. A bit while. I just took someone off after the warnings. The person didn't do I suspect that he or she might not even be a legitimate member. So he's gone off. Everything I'm telling you is out of the little experience we have gathered teaching this for over 10 years now, even more, if you include the time that we were TAs at the senior level, TAs as national service person, even when we were students after our level 200 decades or so ago, we were able to help people out. So it is a wealth of experience that we put together to advise so that you will do well without stress. And I tell you, 
even if you didn't know it then, that's okay. Now we are trying to help ourselves know it. So take your workbook and look, let your eyes see it. And I've, I've showed you where that rule is, transposition. It is also called contrapositive. Go to your second page, the workbook, look at logical equivalent rule number five, and you will see it so that you can share in what Naomi and Vera just said, and then you will learn it now. So in the past, you didn't know it for the over 25, but you will be able to know it for the over 50, which is ahead of us. Okay. Now, so if I have P conditional Q, the rule of transposition says the Q now becomes the antecedent and the P then becomes the consequent. But because you have changed their positions, they both become negated. That's the rule for transposition. I could give you not P conditional, Q. If they transpose, you negate the negation. Okay, so if you know the rule, then you just apply them. So the official rule is P conditional Q will become equivalent to not Q conditional, not P. It means if I had said not P conditional, not Q, then it will become equivalent to Q conditional P. We'll be applying double negation and also transposition all at once. These are the things you must know so that no matter how we twist and turn, you are able to interpret the rule. So if I ask you to, the, the question said, demonstrate the validity of the replacement rule called transposition. And I gave you a clue, use table. Use table analysis, okay. use table analysis. So you would do so like we have done all this while. You will just plot. Okay, it's a biconditional. So you first plot your P, you plot your Q, you plot your P conditional Q, you plot your not P conditional, not Q, and then finally you plot for your all of them biconditional, the other one. If you do this correctly, you see that your biconditional, the final formula will have true, 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 true to be a tautologous one. That shows you that the equivalence is a valid one. Okay, so that was what was expected of you. How many of you got that correct? <laughs> How many? How many of you got that? What do I mean? No, I had, I had it right. Very good. I like your confidence. So, Pam, but we'll know when we finish with our gauging of, of that content. Okay, then how about question uh, three? Question three says, how many, question three said, how many possible combinations of truth conditions will the following formula have when plotting on the truth table? You see, how many possible combinations of truth values will the following formula have? That's a truth value, truth conditions. The following formula have when you plot it on the table. And so you were all expecting a formula from me. And I said, the formula is the rule of material implication. That is what, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that is what stressed some of you. Ah, give us the formula so that we can play that we can do it. I should give you the formula. No, I'm like Nebuchadnezzar. I have had a dream. Tell me the dream first. When you finish, interpret it. Otherwise I will thought out all of you. Or I'm like Peru. <laughs> tell me my own dream that I had. You tell me the dream when you can interpret. That's what happened. So if you don't know the rule, then you are unable to do the very simple work, which was to use the two raised to the power n formula to find how many possible combinations of truth. You see that. So what is the rule for material implication? I see three hands up. Am I allowed to call any of them? Or oh, it was up for the previous. Okay, so I see a new hand. Let me call Senam Vincent. Go ahead, Senam. Thanks. Yes. Oh. yes, my dear. Please, um, I'm trying to see. We have um, P condition na Q, and it must you negate the antecedent. This is the P. So it, and the same, uh, the connective sign will change to disjunction. Very good. You have Very good. Very good. So just in case you didn't hear uh, Senam well, well, this is what Senam says. If you have P 
T conditional KO by material implication, that, conjun uh, that conditional called P conditional KO will become equivalent to not P disjunction K. And, and so if I say P conditional KO and you say not P disjunction K, we are not disagreeing at all. We are saying the same thing in a different way. So that's the rule. How many atomic formulas do we have in this compound that Senam has beautifully mentioned? How many atomic formulas? I want to watch and uh, work the possible combinations of two to have. That's Well, I'm pleased too. Two, very good. So if we have two, then how many possible combinations will we have? Okay, Felix Asante. Look, we have four. We have four. And that is all I was looking for. You show me your working and you get that mark. That's all. So there's someone's stress will be that he or she didn't know how to work, uh, how to state the material implication rule. And unfortunately, that will not be my doing. I told the class to engage them. Okay, engage them. We, we, we worked with them several times. The last revision we had before the I, I, I took you to the page that had some equivalences there for us to practice together. And you did a beautiful job at that. So if you were coming to class, and I know you were, and you were engaging the content and making use of tutorials and accessing content and using your platforms <laughs> for that, that work, then page 22 would be very relevant to you. You see page 22, we discussed it online and in class. Uh, material implication is number seven down there. If you are looking at, at your work page 22, practice make perfect, that page. You see P conditional Q is equivalent to not P disjunction. Those two parties are joined together. Okay, all right. So I can move on now to the next question. The next question, will be question four, and I want an answer from the class. The question says, distinguish the exclusive sense of a disjunction from the inclusive sense of it. I have never said I is that for elements of formal logic that are this easy. I haven't. Ask all your colleagues, or your, 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 your senior, your tell This is a modular system, COVID-inspired interim assessment. <laughs> Hey, Isaac, sir, go ahead. Hello, madam. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Madam, please, the exclusive sense of disjunction tells us that uh, it expresses an idea of at least one of the alternatives and not both. Very good. One of the alternatives of a disjunction. Of and a not disjunction, both. not both. Well, Very the good. inclusive express an idea of at least one of the alternatives and possibly both. Excellent. You write that, you get the full mark. Full mark. I don't even, if you're not careful, I'll do it as well. I'll Madam, add. please, uh, when I wrote my, I gave example. Hey, then you get plus one. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> my sister who said the, the paper, it was difficult for us. Have you heard your friends? Every question I've asked is your colleagues that are answering. So you're careful, because people will get perfect score. <laughs> Sometimes people like to hide, and I, I, I'm not speaking on you. I know you are speaking for some people, perhaps, but I really want people to be cautious when they think that no, it's not true. <laughs> it is never true. Somebody's colored drink on the table that looks like brandy. It's so good. I'm telling you, it is a person has taken about six bottles and it's still sitting down. You don't know the content inside, you see. So our capacities are not the same. That's why I'm very patient. That's why I set questions like this. So that regardless of our, our capacities, we are all able to do it. Right. So that was what our friend said, the distinction between exclusive sense and inclusive sense. And this is detailed detail in your workbook. We discussed it. I mentioned it in class. So, so we are good. Okay. Now we can go to question five and you did only eight questions so if so far you've gotten everything correct then you are around 16 already 16 marks i think now let's go to question five state unambiguously the law of non-contradiction is this an IA question this one 
ah, this is not an AI question. This is a preamble that should initiate the, the questions that I'm going to ask. But I wanted to encourage you so that you, you will feel confident as you build on your abilities to test for the, uh, 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 what is it, invalidity, what have you. So I asked such a question to reward you. Over 25, they state unambiguously the law of non-contradiction, the principle of non-contradiction. I'm looking for someone who hasn't spoken yet. So I see Kayla, Nana, Atu. Atu. Kayla, go ahead. Kayla, or Kayla, eh? I think it's Kayla. Go ahead. Essence cannot be both true and false at the same time. Okay, so if you end at the same time, I will take one small tiny mark from, from it. Suppose you for two marks, I'll give you one or one and a half. It's a good effort, Kayla. Thank you. Someone talk up. Let me hear from um, Hello. Uh, Florence in Kuma. Florence, stop up so that Kayla will get the full mark. A statement cannot be both true and false at the same time and in the same respect. Excellent. That is perfect. At the same time and in the same respect. If you don't add the second one, there can be some ambiguity there when we are discussing a uh, non-contradiction, okay? I can be here and not be here. If I say I am here in person, but not here in mind, you see? So in the same respect is important. It is raining, but it is not raining. If we left it at that, not in symbolized form, but in natural language. Someone may interpret that to mean that it is raining as in God is blessing us, but it is not raining as in physical rain is not falling. You see, so if you don't qualify your expressions, you may not necessarily be said to have created a contradiction. That's why we say the, the principle says, the principle of non-contradiction says, a statement cannot be both true and false at the same time and in the same respect. They can be true and false at the same time if we have different respects in mind. If we are referring to that concept differently, that's why I gave you this example. So you have to qualify them with both. And if you do what Florence and Kruma just said, uh, we top that what Kayla did, then you get a full mark for that question. That's, that was question five, you're almost done. Question six, I think question six, I gave a formula. These are the ones that we'll have to do in class. Let me see if it's something we can do. Test for consistency of this statement using three analysis. And the statement was open bracket, not P disjunction P. So let me do it and then I can, we can do it together in class later. Then you can have your confidence built that, ah, Adam Rock, I saw a word. Got everything correct. Okay, so it was not P disjunction P, bracket close, and another disjunction Q conditional not P also into bracket. So the main connective is a disjunction. We are testing for consistency using three analysis. That's small, small chops. We'll finish it in no time. We would have to branch, put a not P. You can be doing it with me. Put a not P disjunction P on the left branch. Then we'll put our Q conditional not P on the right branch. We are done with the main decomposition. Now we we'll, we'll have to decompose the left branch, which is itself a disjunction. So we we'll have not P on one branch and P on the other. Then we'll come to the right branch. We want to decompose that conditional, the conditional. So the Q has to be negated. The P we maintain the not P as it was given to us. We are done with our decomposition. Every branch opens. That is already consistent, we are done. Okay, so that formula will be consistent if we apply the rules. We can still go over that in class for those who may need it. I don't think most of you would need it. Now question seven, I will need a response from the class. So please listen. Whenever prices increase, quantity demanded is likely to fall. That's a conditional statement. If prices increase, then uh, 
quantity four. Now, then I end. The conclusion was. Oh, I see that people are not fighting the thing well. I'm trying to find someone who wrote the question. Ah. So whenever prices increase, quantity demanded is likely to fall. That's the premise. Then I end. So prices did not increase. So prices did not increase. We agreed that the first one is our premise and it's a conditional. Whenever prices increase, quantity demanded is likely to fall. What is, which one is our antecedent? Anyone, I see four hands. I don't only five people in the class. Now I see six. Keep your hand up, I'm assessing the class as well. Okay, if you know it, keep your hand up. Okay, so I, I see some few hands now. David Amwa. Madam, the antecedent will be whenever prices increase. Okay, so that, that's fine, but whenever prices increase, a sentence fragment. So you want to make it a statement, a proposition. So you say prices increase. You see, then it will okay. be something that can be either true or false. Very good. That's the antecedent. And friends, what is the consequence? All of us. Quantity demanded is what? Likely. Likely to fall. <laughs> well done. Okay. So you know the antecedent and you know the consequence. Antecedent is prices increase. Consequent is quantity demanded is likely to fall. Now, my conclusion was, so prices did not increase. So prices did not increase. Which of the two have I negated now? Is it the antecedent or the consequence? Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up, please. Keep your hand up. Yeah. But I want to reward you, so keep your hand up. Keep your general out of the class. Melissa. Madam, please, don't please, if negated the antecedent. Very good. Very good. So, and that is now my conclusion. I'm showing you how to, to detect which rule of inference I'm working with. That's, that's how you do it. I'm reminding you again. So I gave you a formula, one of the premises, and I gave you a conclusion. This is called an entemy, where you give one premise, a conclusion, you tell the person it's a valid argument, the person should now do magic and determine what the hidden premise is. What step did we miss before arriving at the conclusion I've given you? So whenever prices increase, quantity demanded is likely to fall. So prices did not increase. That's a negation of the antecedent in the conclusion. What has happened? Now, what is the hidden premise? I said, state the hidden premise in the valid, oh, I even told you it's, it's modus tollens. And I did the work for you. So someone tell me, Julius Ousu, what's the hidden premise? Hello? Yes, sir, I can hear you. No, please, can you come again? Yes, I want to know the hidden premise that will lead us to the conclusion down there. See, the conclusion is, so prices did not increase. If I say whenever prices increase, quantity demanded is likely to fall. Therefore, prices did not increase. What have I missed? What step have I missed? What's the hidden premise that I should say before I come to the conclusion that so prices did not increase? And we have we said that quantity, quantity um demanded quantity demanded quantity demanded did what well, we are doing mm. modus tollens valid argument okay let me take help from one of your friends listen in eh, so that you can get it quickly next time Emmanuel Dia yeah. Manuel go ahead. Demand did not fall. Very good. Prices, eh, eh. 
quantity demanded did not fall. That is it. In negation of the consequent first, then you conclude by negating the antecedent. That is what will generate modus tollens valid argument. That is what we can say. You. So let's use something more accessible with simple uh, so that you get a pattern and then later on we can develop it again. If I said, if you study, then you will pass. Therefore, Atadra did not pass. If you study, then you will pass. Therefore, Atadra did not pass. Then I tell you to introduce the hidden premise that made this argument valid by modus tollens. I even added that, then I've done the work for you. It just means, show me that you know the pattern called modus tollens, valid argument. And that rule is a rule of inference. Modus tollens says, if you study, then you will pass. The next premise you say what? You did not pass, therefore yeah. you did not study, okay. So that is the pattern that I think our assignment gave you. How many of you got that correct? Keep your hand up if you got it correct. Anyone who got it correct should keep their hand up. Very good. Keep your hand up if you got it correct, please. You know what I'm doing, so I'll know which kinds of questions to ask you. So if this one, these types were comfortable to you, I'm trying to take an assessment of it and you don't say it. Then we were actually the one that apparently you weren't too comfortable with because I'm doing an analysis. So when I, whatever I ask you, who is laughing? <laughs> okay, all right. So I go Emmanuel. Yeah, Vera, I miss your surname. I hope there wouldn't be any other Vera. If not, then let me see. I can search for it because I'm rewarding. Okay, Vera, it wasn't Vera, Ewuku. Vera, the Vera that spoke, was it Vera, Ewuku? I, I put down Vera and I missed Doc, it was Vera and Obey. Vera and Obey. Ah, because it wasn't Vera, you. Thank you very much. Vera and Obey. Right. So I have you now. So far, those who have earned themselves are Max, Frank Yepua, Naomi Atriki. I called Rosina, but she didn't speak then. I think she had a challenge. So Frankie Eboa, Naomi Atriki, Vera and the Beju, Senna and Vincent, Okai Felix Asante, Tay Isaac, Kayla Nana, Tu, Florence Nkrumah, Melissa, Ikria Edu, and Emmanuel Idia. Did I miss hey, some? Miss this one too, dear. Yeah, this one. Yes, yeah. I've written this one. I have to finish. <laughs> Sorry, this one. Last time too, did I do that to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a prayer warrior too. Eh? Don't worry. Maybe I haven't finished. Have you finished the class? <laughs> okay. So that was question seven. Now we can go to question eight. State the names of any five compounds you know in propositional logic. Look at how easy your eye was. It's an easy question whether you will be getting 23, 22, 24, 21, 20, all over 25. Then the remnant of Israel will come with their two and seven. <laughs> Please uh, answer my last question. Any five comp compounds you know in propositional logic? The name. Madam, has What's it? Ukwampa is ready to answer. <laughs> Ukwampa, be patient. Haven't I given you a mark? I, I think you spoke. Oh. Yeah, I spoke, but I don't even know whether you've given me a mark or not. Please, you oh, Jock, me. I'm coming. Ukwampa, you should have prompted me. I, I remember you spoke. I think. What you said was so, uh, so was enjoyable. I'm in. Okay, so Kwampa start. One, only one. State one compound. Doc, please yeah. me. I'm coming, give teacher that. I'm coming here. Doc, me. You miss Pa, Baba, Max. Now, Baba, they be in your Max. You have plenty Max. I know your name, Pa. Listen, and Rosina, I'll call you back. Listen, there are people that are amazed. They don't know connect. Jennifer, you'll be amazed, though. There are people, they haven't heard anything called connect. Compound, atomic, conditional. As for the modus, something, something, when you start talking, then their BP is going high. Because either willingly or willingly, they didn't engage. And I knew that we'll have that challenge. There may not be many, but I'm, I'm always targeting such students. 
from a class of say 250 something or so, you may have some six people who are like that. So I teach with them in mind. You can pay them back for, for deciding or choosing not to engage from the beginning, but they are our target. So take your time and mention the type of compound so that they will hear it for the first time and also know it before we start our exam. <laughs> one, one. Let's take it one, one. Ukwampa, the first one. Conjunction. Thank you very much. It's correct. Conjunction is one. Two. Let me take. Be patient. Gift you. Gift you. Chat. Was it gift you? Madam chat? me. Madam me. Please, Madam. Put your hand Madam. down. Yeah. Who has spoken should please put your hand down so that others can benefit. Madam, gift is here. Yeah, gift go ahead. Someone has mentioned conjunction. Oh, joke me. Madam, gift is here. Ah, I see that 27 hands raised. That's, that's awesome. Oh, joke. <laughs> gift go ahead. Unconditional. Thank you very much. That's bicon. Please, my friends who do not know the compound, now they are mentioning it. Doc. Doc, please. Doc, Doc please. Like... Bye, conditional. Okay. Okay, so that was gifted. Bi conditional. Now, Chris Lights. Baba, Baba, go ahead. Doc. Baba, go ahead. Doc, negation. Very good. That's correct. It's a type of compound. I wrote negation down instead of writing Baba Mitzvah. <laughs> then, four. Ben. Hey, please let me call my class rep. Okay. I will dog all of you. Class Ben, please go ahead. Madam Conjunction. Very good. And I can say, let me do record with Very good. That's also correct. Then the last one, all those who say they haven't spoken, all of you. Everybody everyone else. and and with that we just finished oh yeah the main until you are please mute your thing for me eh? the main and three i very easy question over there for that big group how many of you scored a perfect mark for that susanna and you know did you score everything for the questions i asked right now yes mother. Very good. Well done. Tell your friend, the sister who said, hey, there's 10 minutes. I want her to hear <laughs> that people finish or they will get a perfect one. And I'm confident about your scripts are in front of me. Okay. We are working on them very fast so that you can get feedback from us. Now, the second group got questions that are almost related to that. I say almost because some of them, if it is disjunction, uh, the disjunctive syllogism, I would rather give the premise and then the conclusion and say, introduce the hidden premise for one group. The other group, I'll say, what is the conclusion? The other group, I'll say, symbolize it and translate. So it's always around the same concepts and we are fine. There was a question that I asked uh, students to just give me the logical, the main connective. Give me just the main connective in symbols. Don't give me the word or the English version of it. So don't tell me conditional. Then you write C O N D I. No. If it's the, the main connective is a conditional, you were to write the symbol for conditional. That's all. So those ones were there. And I want to prompt you about if you write the word conditional, you get it wrong. It means you don't know the symbolic form of conditional. Now let's look at. Uh, so the expression, the driver is not in the car, yet the engine is on. Which type of compound is it? What's the main connective of that? The driver is not in the car, yet the engine is on. Please, if you have spoken, put your hand down so I can get some friends here. Kwa mua ifwa. Ifwa, go ahead. Say Ram. Go ahead. Conjunction. Conjunction. Very good. Well done. What makes you know that it's a conjunction? Because, because of the yet. Yes. Well done. So you will now write the sign for a symbolic form 
for my direction. Then the second one says, I know my <laughs> Maxwell set of fear. I know my redeemer leaves, Maxwell. <laughs> Which type of compound is Which what is the main connect? That's the question. What's the main connective? What's the main connective of I know my redeemer leaves? You see that? That's quite tough. Maxwell, you have muted. There is no. Hello, dog. <laughs> there is no connective there. Can you see that? It's a simple statement. It's a P. So it doesn't have any connective there. That's the answer. People manage to get conjunction for that. I know my redeemer lives. It's a simple atomic statement. I got it. So... You got it there? Eh? Well done, well done. And the third one says the student will pass or she will not pass. Actually, you say you can't hear anything. Check your check the volume of your gadget. If it's, you don't have an earphone, then check. If you have an earphone, check the volume. If you don't have an earphone, check the machine. Okay, because I'm shouting, shouting. I'm in the office. I'm shouting very, very loud, loudly also. Okay. Hello, Doc. Holy sir. Yes. Uh, please, I know my redeemer leverage. I said is a um, is an atomic statement. Yes, it's an atomic statement. So there is no connective in it. Oh. Yes, it's correct. The third one was the student will pass or should not pass. Anyone? Please, all of all the hands I see. No. You have spoken, so please put your hand down. No, please, Priscilla. Priscilla Casadoma. There's junction. Very good. So there's junction. That's the main connective. Someone wants to know what about the negation. The negation is not the main connective. Okay. So Priscilla is right. So if you write the disjunction in symbol, you have to show me the sign for the disjunction. That's all. The the vein turned upside down. Now, the fourth one is telling the truth is both necessary and sufficient for writing. I think for writing exams or something. Telling the truth is both necessary and sufficient for uh, winning a game. I think that's what that's winning a game. Um, Edmond Butry. Madam, please condition. Edmond is not correct, though. Both necessary and sufficient. <laughs> Who will help Edmond out? Because I just wrote down his name. Please bail him quick, otherwise the mark will go. Alasan Sumela, bail Edmond. This one, if you answer it, the conjunction. Is this a conjunction? Auntie? Alasan? Yes. No, it is not. Someone come and build the two of them quickly. They are falling into the water. <laughs> I said, I the truth is both necessary and sufficient. Both necessary and sufficient. That expression. Anybody? Madam, please buy conditioner. A buy conditioner. Who is this? Edmond Butchie. Yes, madam. You, do, you build yourself. Yes. It's a buy conditioner, eh, my dear friends. So don't forget it. If I say passing it, having a passport is both necessary and sufficient to travel. And I'm saying that if you have a passport, then you can travel. And if you do not have a passport, then you cannot travel. So it is a strict condition. It goes both ways. That's why it's an equivalent. Both necessary and sufficient. That expression, both necessary and sufficient, captures the by conditional. So that one day, if you didn't be a man for it's in the workbook, put it there for you. Right where we're doing the compound. Okay. The examples are there for if and only if. The same name for if and only if is what both necessary and sufficient. Now you know. Okay. Then these ones are asked that they translate and symbolize, showing clearly the dictionary, test for consistency on the tree, and then type of consistency on the table. It looks like it is so much work, but it's straightforward. There isn't much to do there, okay? So the expression was, first one, no man has a womb. How would you translate that? No man has a womb. Eunice, Erica, Ahiato. 
Mayu. Madam, hey, Doc, if you are a man, then you don't have a womb. That's very good. So you have opened it out to show a life condition. What be your business? If X is a man. You don't add the then, F. Huh. So okay. there should be a complete statement that can be true. So your, your P will be X is a man. You see that? Yeah. Very good. That's yes. correct. Ahiato. All right, Ahiato. That name is popular on campus here. Eunice Erica Ahiato. Okay. Then, so Eunice has done one of the alternatives, and the other one will be the second one. Now, Joyce Akins. Symbolize Eunice's thing for us. Let us see now. So she says, if, if X is a man, then X is not, okay, then X does not have a womb. Our X is a man is P. X has a womb is Q. Joyce, symbolize that for us. Let's see. Madam, it will be P. Mm -hmm. P conditional, not Q. Well done. Well done. That's excellent. You see that we are doing magic. You are not, these things are not visible to us. So it should tell you how much you have imbibed the content and, and, and encourage you working. It is doable. So if P and not Q, that is what the symbolized form of no man as a womb will be like. And we ask that they show the dictionary and test for consistency on the tree and on the table type of consistency. So that this one, both on the two on the table. So consistency, you plot P, the values for P, true, true, false, false, the values for Q, uh, true, false, true, false, and then you interpret a conditional. You need not, not Q, so you do the same. I mean, we can practice more in class, but you plot on the table, you decompose on the tree, and in both ways, it will be consistent. I, I, this is for you, Vera Ewuku. Okay, so you can earn a map. The chief invigilator is neither at the exam center nor at the, washroom, uh, at the washroom, yet his phone and pen are on the table. It's very long. Let's do it one at a time. So we we'll need the chief invigilator is at the exam center. That's one, Vera, okay? I've given you one, you need to give me one. We said the chief vigilator is neither at the exam center nor at the washroom, yet his phone and pen are on the table. I get the, the chief vigilator is at the exam center. So Vera, you to give me one, one other dictionary from that statement. Doc, please, can you read it again? Yes, the chief vigilator is neither at the exam center nor at the washroom, yet phone and pen are on the table. Doc, at the washroom. At the washroom is not a statement. <laughs> mm. We'll make it a statement. You are doing it, just, just make it a complete statement, an expression that can be true or false. You are doing propositional logic, so your dictionary should be propositions. Not fragments. Okay. He's at the washroom. Very good. So he's at the washroom will be another dictionary. Well done. That will be the second one to add to mine. So uh, what was the name? Po Vera Iwuku got a mark for that. Let me get uh, someone to do the other one. Bridget Tete, go ahead. Okay, Madam, Al, his phone and pen are on the table. Okay, so if you did it that way, then you would have created a compound in your dictionary. Can you see that? So I would want you to say his, I will be his phone is on the table so that we can get S, which is what? His pen is on the table. Oh, okay. So this Thank you. is an end of conjunction. You are welcome, my dear Bridget Mensa. And if we did that, then we can now fit in the connective. So let me get someone bold enough to put all our four uh, atomic statements together to create that very big compound there. I would, I would hazard, Genevieve, are you ready? Genevieve, okay, do that, let's see. So the chief invigilator is neither at the exam center, that's our P, nor at the washroom, that's our Q, 
yet his phone and pen are on the table. Those are our RNAs. Genevieve, if you get it correct, uh, Max, it's top. Go ahead. Um, so it will be not P. Hmm? Doc. I'm listening. Not P. Not P conjunction, not Q. Go ahead. And then conjunction. Yes. Uh, the last part, please. Yet his phone and pen are on the table. Uh, Please go ahead. The first part is correct. Yet, yeah. yet, yet is what? I want you to. Finish. Yet is a conjunction. There we go. So, conjunction, another open bracket. Go on. His phone and pen are on the table. And uh, phone is um, R. R and then R. Then statement was S. Yes. Conjunction S. Excellent. Well done. So that is so we we'll open bracket. You, you got yourself to mark. Then um, okay. 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 Now, you. yeah, you're welcome. So this is it. Those who missed the chief, the chief invigilator is neither at the exam center nor at the washroom. That was the tricky part, and she got it straight. Neither nor is saying not at the center and not at the washroom. You can check from your page one. Neither nor. Mm -hmm. Page one of your workbook, negation and conjunction. Neither nor is not P and not Q. So if you don't interpret it well, you won't get that symbolism right. So this is not exam center. Our exam center statement is P and not washroom. That is our Q. Those two into bracket. Yet, yet is a conjunction. Yet phone and pen. So the phone statement and the pen statement. And then you make that also well formed. That is how you symbolize that. Then you can test for consistency on the chair and the table, blah, 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 and get your mark. Well done. Well done, Jennifer. Now let's go to the third one. All politicians tell lies only if all politicians are rich. All politicians tell lies only if all politicians are rich. Um, now, everybody here has spoken, so I'll take courage again. Where are the rest of the hands? There are 94 people. I have records for 24 people who have spoken. The rest of you, what are you doing? I will reward the marks. Hmm. When I finish and I upload my results, I will come and say, no, this thing, Austin, Austin has come. Austin, you talk here. Courage, wait, let me hear Austin. <laughs> Um, and then we said all, but if all politicians are, all politicians tell lies only if all politicians are rich. And then if Q is a, if Q is a politician, um, wait, all politicians tell lies if all politicians are rich. Yeah, I didn't say um, if. I said only if. Only if. Ma'am, let's yeah. So let's, your, yeah, let's S be what. Let's Q be um all politicians. Maybe you and the M. All politicians. No, X let's Q be politicians. X is a politician. If you say politician, that's a sentence fragment. You see that it's, it's not. I can't say true or false to politicians. Uh -huh. That was what I was prompting your colleagues earlier. Uh, so if I say all politicians tell lies, that's a conditional. When you open it out, if X is a politician, then X tells lies. Tells lies. So that you can get clear statements as antecedent and consequent. There are practice questions on that at your page 20, where I have titled it more exercises. So you take note of that in your workbook. They will come to the class now, not to my year Austin. Okay, so take note of that down there on page 20 where I've titled it more exercise. Down there you see try and they are all 
disguised conditioners. Wherever there is true love, there is sorrow. All humans are mortals. No man has a womb. The peer cannot be a vandal if she's not in Commonwealth Hall. Having a passport is necessary if one wants to travel. Studying hard is a sufficient condition for passing your final exams. We will play football unless it rains. See, unless, we know unless we are at this junction. But because of the rule of material implication, this can be rewritten as a conditioner. So you have to be able to detect it. The last one there says, either it's steady hard or you will fail. I thought that's a disjunction. Yes, it is. But by material implication, you can interpret that as a conditional. Okay. So I'm saying that when you have such statement, no man has a womb. It's your duty to open it out. It's a universal statement to determine your antecedent and your consequence. In all scenarios, your atomic formulas must be propositions, not sentence fragments, because we reward your dictionary. If it's for six marks, your dictionary is two marks. The decomposition on the table is two marks. The decomposition on the tree is two marks. So if your dictionary, uh, your dictionary is wrong, you can lose two marks. Okay, even though the whole work is correct. All right. Now back to my friend Austin. So we have the expression: all politicians tell lies only if all politicians are rich. The first part is itself a conditional, like you have rightly identified. The second part is also a conditional. Now let's open them out one after the other. That was what courage, Courage's first question was, if you remember, when we did men are good, women are bad. So X is a politician, it's a good antecedent. Then the next one will be X tells lies. That's a good consequence. If we have those two, we can do the first part of our very complex statement. All politicians tell lies. We have captured that. Now the second part says all politicians are rich. We don't need to create X as a politician again. We have that from our first expression. So we just need an additional X is rich. And then we have our variables to create a compound, okay? Now my interest is how you interpret only if. I want the class to take note that only if is not the same as if. They both describe a conditional. Mm -hmm. But only if takes you to the consequent, whilst if takes you to the antecedent. I'll say it again. If and only if, those two expressions both depict what a conditional. Like if you, see, if you see what is the sum of three and five, you know that that's addition, okay? Because of the use of the word sum. The same thing is applying here. When you see if, it is indicative of what a conditional. When you see only if, it is also indicative of a conditional. However, when I see if without the only, when I see just if, the statement following it is the antecedent of that conditional. So if antecedent, then consequent. But if I see only if, only if doesn't lead me to the antecedent. Only if leads me to the consequent. Okay? That is what you should take note of. And it is still in your page one. So go to page one now, look at your workbook. I want to show you there. This is how you learn. You look, you do, you think, then you write. Let all those four faculties work together. It is an effective way of learning. That's how I say, take your workbook and look at it. Practice this one, write it and let me see. Don't say, oh, but I, I got it, I got it. When you write and you think it and you see it also, depending on the, capacity you have. If you see, you think, you write, and you do, then it sticks better than just observing and, and imagining that it won't. It, it, it went through. Okay, so I said, look at your page one. And that the conditional words, the English approximations of logical constants. Look at the conditional. They gave you P conditional Q as the first one, so that you see the antecedent position, the P's position is the antecedent one. Now, 
go down to the one, two, three, the sixth one. You see that they write P only if Q. Show you that antecedent only if consequent. You see, only if leads you to the consequent. But if I wanted to use just if, I would say if P, then Q. Or Q, which is consequent, if P. So that the if will introduce the antecedent. In other words, if you see only if, what follows is the consequent. I have repeated this about three or four times, even though I know that this is a recorded video that can be played back and played back and played back. That should already tell you what I intend to do or I have done in your exam. Okay, so we are sorted. And so all politicians tell lies will be the antecedent, uh, Austin, and then all politicians are rich will be the consequent because of how we are interpreting only if, only if takes that big conditional to what the consequent. This person whose paper I'm looking at is doing really well. I think that, uh, yeah. So if we had the formula R and not R, conjunction, not P and not Q. R and not R, conjunction, not P and not Q. How many possible conditions of truth will that statement have? How many possible combinations of truth will that statement have? R and not R, conjunction, not P and not Q. For a mark, if we are plotting on two tables, how many possible combinations would, would we have? Valerie. Around eight. Valerie, oh, sorry. Valerie. Sorry. Valerie. Let me think, Valerie, okay. Sorry, I know you are enthusiastic about it. It's fine. Valerie, I gave you opportunity. Rosina. Rosina Japan. R and not R, conjunction, not P, conjunction, not Q. How many atomic formulas are there, Rosina? Go ahead, quick. Rosina, Libya, now what you? Eight. Eight, because there were three variables. Thank you very much. Three, three. The possible, the truth. Three atomic um, compounds. That was my second question. So then, the initial, yes. how many possible combinations will we have? Eight. Well done. I think those, those should cover the extra ones for the second group. They were asked to demonstrate the validity of the rule of De Morgan. And I think we know De Morgan. If you don't know De Morgan's law, then it is shameful. At this stage, you must know De Morgan's law. Someone state De Morgan's law for me, please. Valerie. No, no. Valerie Sand is not happy. Or anyone. Hey, listen. Let, let us think, wait, eh? you, have, you have a mark now. Let me get a, a feedback from Ohenewa Biri Prime Root. Doc, negation of negation of into brackets P hey. conjunction Q is we'll negation one. of negation P disjunction negation Q. Excellent. I would have done the same with. Conjunction as well. So negated conjunction. Yes. A negation of both conjunct and the sign itself. Well done. You know the mug. Ah, so which one couldn't you answer? <laughs> Tell me, class. I'm interested. Go, you have answered all the questions. The which one? There, which one? <laughs> Somebody said. Yo, uh, the inclusive and exclusive from... was so confusing. The exclusive and the inclusive. <laughs> no problem. It, you are allowed to get five wrong crowd. And so you've been a contender for A. You know that a uh, hundred, I can say A is 80 and above. So you're allowed to get 20 wrongs and still get an A. Uh -huh. So that's fine. <laughs> 
no problem. I thought that people people were giving the indication, one or two people be at least were giving the indication that they didn't even answer any one question. But ah, this woman, after all our learning, eh, that eight questions they were so difficult. We couldn't even answer only one book. I'm crying to me, Andrew. It's not true. <laughs> and people have answered that, you know, sisters, so she was. <laughs> Doc, but earlier you told us that yeah. we could learn any three of the logical equivalences and we'll be okay. But you did. The Morgan was. I one. did. I did learn any three, but the ones you asked were not the ones I learned. I didn't ask any specific one. Material implication. About material implication, we discussed in class. My sister, we, dis we discussed material implication. It's one of the simplest, straightforward. I didn't mention constructive dilemma. I didn't mention absorption. Because it will be, I didn't even do material equivalence itself. Look at how complex that is. I didn't touch on those. I, I know them, by, but it would be difficult to ask. But the Morgan, uh, when the, uh, was that a commutation, okay. transposition, tautology, okay. these are straightforward, double negation. You see, then for the rules of inference, uh, uh, modus ponens, modus tollens, even the video, the last video session I did with you, Ming, uh, Suji Campus, I mentioned all of them again and told you that if you know these four, cry, you should do fine. My sister, why? Anyway, okay, so let's let's move on quickly. I want to make sure I've touched on everything. So one, for, for group two, they had their first question. Their first question was the statement, two statements are logically equivalent. If someone complete that for us, when do we say two statements are logically equivalent? And I think it will be done. Um, Eric, 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 when do we say two statements are logically equivalent? But Eric, your hand, you are, you are muted. Eric, you're muted. Okay, anybody? A mute and talk. There are nine of you. I don't know who is ready to speak now. When do we say two statements are logically equivalent? We went through that during our revision. Nobody. Um, Valerie Hagen. Go ahead, Valerie. No, please, we say they are logically equivalent when they have the same truth value. Let's have the mark. Well, madam, can you say when they are tautology? Like, let's have the mark. Madam, if, if they essentially are. Yeah. Did you engage the recording? Or we are just wasting time and energy and stress. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, they are logically equivalent if they essentially accept the same thing in different ways. That's correct. That will get a full mark. But there's still the exact thing to say. And Michael Rabero, Michael, go ahead. Look, when very good, Michael. I see. So when they as the two different propositions have the same two values, and that no, okay. all possible truth conditions. Page 22, in the revision towards IA video, I repeated the same thing as I'm saying now. Page 22, so if you have your page, and I would have opened the page, I've seen those highlighted content. I've underlined them there for you. My dear friends, it, it will come again, no? It will come again. Everything we have done. I've underlined it already. Yes, I've underlined it for you myself. The lesson title, lesson four. Okay, so that was for the second group. All the other things are really equivalent to what the group three people did. Let's see group one, if there was anything different, then we are ready to end the session. I think we have a very active city campus. Staff. So you should you should make an effort and let it show your performance. Okay, do that because you are very active. You do your best with what you are given. 
this one says that the truth value of, I think that you have typed or not. Okay, that this one to the main connective thing, then it, it translates the sufficient condition. Which of the two conditions represent antecedent? Is it the sufficient condition or the necessary condition? Which one is antecedent and which is consequent? When you are using the terms necessary and sufficient. Raise up your hand if you have an answer. My question is, if I use the, the phrase or the word sufficient condition, am I referring to antecedent or consequent? Madam, the sufficient is the antecedent. Very good. Keep it, dear friends. Keep it in, in your mind. So if I say the sufficient condition for graduating at the University of Ghana is so and so and so and so and so, it means I'm saying that X graduates should be the antecedent in your symbolism. The sufficient condition is so and so. Okay, let me, let me put content to it so I don't confuse you. The sufficient condition for graduating at UG is having <clears throat> three point, I think it's what, 1.5 and above grade point average. The sufficient condition for graduating is having uh, 1.5 or so and above grade point average. I have showed you what is the sufficient condition. So go and pull it. Having uh, 1.5 and above is sufficient for graduating. So I was wrong earlier. Graduating should go into what the consequence. The one that is sufficient should come into what the antecedent position. Uh, eating vitamins is sufficient to build in protective. Whatever. I want something that is very straightforward so that you don't have to struggle to understand. No. Yeah. No, please, may I know whether I'm giving a different mark because I've answered another question. Why, why are you asking me that? Okampa, if you don't, take your mark out. <laughs> why should I give you additional mark? Then we'll do 90. Yeah, bet. <laughs> we'll do all the 90 in the session. Don't worry, I'm taking note of that. I know the names. So. I know the names. I write them down. I have 31 now. People don't know. They think I'm joking. I use it because that is where we study. Okay. But to, sister uh, Valerie Hagen, I called you, but I didn't answer a question. So I put a steric on your name. I don't know if the network didn't. No, I was answering, but then. Yeah. And, the people, and, the people, and the people prevented you from continuing. Oh, don't worry. So I've marked it. But your name is now. If we are say Ram, yes, I wrote your name down. Yes, I have. I have written it down. Okay. I will even put for more. I didn't add the serum, so let me add it. Serum for more. Yeah, number six. I'm serious. I'm not joking. So, so the antecedent position, what we call the sufficient position. Then the consequent position. When you draw your conditional symbol, the position for consequent is the one we we describe as the necessary condition. And if you got that, then I'm good. State any three rules of inference, Antiadra. My sister who learned the rules. Any three rules of inference. You can, is it the lado? <laughs> yes, doc. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> any three rules of inference. Doc, modus pones, modus tones, hypothetical syllogism. Hey, but we can wait. So, Miss Way. <laughs> no, you are the logic. Thank you. Someone else top up. See the way the sister was flowing. Oh, dog, me. Who is saying dog? You have a mark already. Okay, go ahead. Oh, dog. Adoption. Yes. Addition. Yes. Yes. Um. <laughs> dog, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I hear you. Uh, they've taken five out. The dog, dog please that. simplification. Yo, okay. That's oh, dog, please Eric. simplification. Yo, Eric, so I've, I've heard you. Thanks. Dog, please simplification. I, I heard you. I've, I've taken notes. Okay. There's still, there's still some. Oh, dog, I want Mark, please. Dog, I want Mark. There's a bloody. Go ahead. I want dog, to say constructive dilemma. 
Constructive dilemma. And uh, absorption, absorption and addition. Thank you. I think one more left. Just as I have to say, no conjunction. No conjunction. No simplification. All right, thank you. Oh, you are. Oh, is there? Oh, is this the other one? Um. Okay, so what we have done, I have muted all. What, what we just did was to help those who feel that it is not possible to see that it is possible, okay? There are nine rules down there, the rules of inference that your friends are eloquently uh, mentioning like that. You can also do it, it's on your page two. It is not too late to at least know the rules of inference. Your friends mentioned them, modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, disjunctive syllogism, Constructive dilemma, quite complex, but not difficult at all. If I, sh I, I showed you again, if you practice absorption, simplification, conjunction, look at conjunction, one of the simplest you can have. If you have P and you also have Q, then obviously you will have P and Q. It's simple. So P standing alone, Q standing alone, when they come together, you can conclude P and Q. She's a woman and she's a mother. Then it means that you can go, therefore, she's a woman and she's a mother. I mean, it's a straightforward thing. Now look at addition. Addition, you have just one atomic statement standing there. You can conclude that atomic statement or some other atomic statement. She's a mother. Therefore, she's a mother or a friend. And that will be true. Remember, for the junction, just one alternative being true is enough to hold the whole the junction true. Okay, so that's the rule for addition. This junction syllogism, we have worked with it this morning. Look at hypothetical syllogism. P conditional Q and Q conditional R will lead us to P conditional R. Okay. Valid. So those are the rules of inference. And there and then, I, I, it is written boldly there. Memorize these rules. Keep them in memory so that you can work with them. How about any three rules of equivalence? We have mentioned all of them. So I think we should be good to go for everything City Campus captured. We should be able to get 25 over 25, easy. And if you got one or two wrongs, not a problem at all. Thank you very much. I want to end, unless you have questions. Gift, you have a map. Genevieve has a map. Yes, more, you have a map. Austin, Nati, you have a map. Uh, send them, we have a mark and courage, so we, we didn't shortchange anyone to put their hand up. Thank you very much. Keep studying. I didn't do the last topic. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah. I'm just wrapping up. When we meet in person on Friday, try and come if you can. I say if you can because I respect your right. Uh, look, I asked, you mentioned my name and I answered the question, but. Uh, it's just Julius that is there. I don't know which of the Julius is that is. But that goes. No, please, you didn't give me my marks. Sorry, Julius, I was locked out. Hey, mommy, me, 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 class. I'm pressing down your name. My name is Julius. But I wrote down your name, okay? Ofoli. No, Ofoli. Yes, I said you gave a chorus answer, but I wrote down your name anyway. No, Samson. That one is encouraging you. Okay, no, thank you. If you didn't do well, I Julius also. Okay. If you didn't do well, don't worry. Someone is telling you that don't worry. Exam day. So you make up. <laughs> That's a, a concern, brother, to some some brothers who maybe are score zero or something. Say no, you no know, worry. 50 day we will break the gap. Okay. I want to I want to wrap up. Let me tell you something. Oh Jonas, you of all people today didn't talk for Jonas Akon. You you contribute a lot, but I don't come again. Jonah, did you talk today? I didn't I didn't write your, down your name. I don't think you did. Today you are keeping it cool, eh? One day the small boys and girls talk a little. Okay, this is the conclusion so that we can end our long video. I am going to no, can me. Yo, promise. If you didn't speak today, yes, it's true. Use your full names when you come here. So that it will be official, then I can keep your records. Okay, doctor. I'm saying that when we meet, we will look at how to test for the validity 
of an argument. Write it down in your notepad. How to test for the validity of an argument. An argument just means a set, a set of statements. So I've given you three formulas or four or five of them. Then I ask you to test for its validity. How you would have arranged it to test for consistency, you use the same method, you put them together. However, there is something you must do. I want to do that in person with you before we, we talk online, okay, so that you can understand and it will be accessible to you easily. Okay, so keep note of that. We'll test for the validity of an argument. I didn't say we will demonstrate the validity of an equivalence rule. We are not saying the same thing. Okay, this one is the validity of an argument. So the method is different. That's one. Then two, we'll learn how to test for type of consistency on the tree using the tree method. We know how to test for type of consistency on tables, but we'll test for type of consistency on the tree. We'll learn that also. And then the final thing will be we'll plot on Venn diagrams. Very simple statements on Venn diagrams. Those who don't like mass, they are coming, take mass, mass, uh, <laughs> mass, 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 very simple ones. And with that, we'll be end, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be, okay. we would have finished the content proper. Then the next week, as the final week says, we'll be able to mop up and do so many practice questions in person. But we'll keep all our online sessions too. Okay, I wish you well. Bring your questions anytime and learn to stick to rules as much as possible. Human face, yes but the guiding principles must be dead so that you will progress. That's how life is. The whole world is built on principles. So you have to learn to be principled. I wish you well. Have a wonderful week. And take care. Bye for now. Bye, bro. Bye-bye.